So, you know, I have a sermon for Veterans Day next year. It was the one I was supposed to preach last week. So I put it in my filing cabinet for future use. So that's good. But uh, I thank you, Dave, for pinch hitting at that time. Uh, thank you, Dave, for all that you do as the elder of the church. So Thanksgiving, every day. Thanksgiving is every day, not just one day of the year. So what are you thankful for? A little, little illustration here. There was a Scottish uh, minister who was known for his uplifting prayers in the pulpit. He always found something good to say to say and be grateful for. Well, there's one sen- Sunday, the weather was so gloomy and bad and stormy that uh, one of the uh, members of the church says, I bet he won't find anything good to say today when he's preaching. Well, much to his surprise, however, the preacher began praying by saying, We thank thee, O Lord, that this is not always like this. Here we are, Sunday before Thanksgiving. What do you think of on Thanksgiving? For most of it's probably turkey. After all, it's the centerpiece of our traditional celebration. So what are you thankful for? Let us pray. Yes, Father, we come before you. We thank you for this day, and we thank you for every day. And this is a busy, special time of the year with Thanksgiving and Advent and Christmas. We're so thankful and grateful to be in your presence. We pray for those who are not here. We have people that are traveling. Be with them as they travel. Keep them safe, Lord. Be with me now, your humble, obedient servant. Give me the words, the ability to preach what you've laid on my heart, to share with your people here in New Brighton. And I give you thanks and praise in advance. In the name of our Lord, in the name of our Savior, and that is Jesus Christ. I preach a lot out of the Psalms. That's a good book to read. I hope you have read the book of Psalms and Proverbs, but Psalms. So today my main text is Psalm 107, verses 1 through 9, and I believe, yes, 7 and 17. So this is what, this is what it says. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for He is good, for His loving kindness is everlasting. For the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he has redeemed from the hand of the adversary, and gathered from the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. They wandered in the wilderness in a desert region. They did not find a way to an inhabited city. They were hungry and thirsty. Their soul fainted within them. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble. He delivered them. He delivered them out of the distresses. He led them also by a straight way to go to an inhabited city. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his loving kindness and his wonders to the sons of men. For he has satisfied the thirsty soul and the hungry soul. He has filled with what is good. Then in uh, verse uh, chapter 7, I believe, 7-1, 717, I'm sorry. It says this, I will give thanks to the Lord according to his righteousness and will sing praises to the name of the Lord Most High. May the Lord have his blessing. As we gather around the table, we generally offer a sincere prayer of gratitude to God for all of his blessings before enjoying the fellowship and the food. Then comes dessert. What comes after dessert? For some people, it's a football game. Others start planning, if they haven't already, to start doing their Christmas shopping. Although Thanksgiving always ends, our expressions of gratitude to God should continue throughout the year, 24-7. And we look at, now we look at Psalm 92, 1-5 this morning. You would turn there, please. Or just bear with me as I find it. It is good to give thanks to the Lord and to sing praises to your name, O Most High, to declare your loving kindness in the morning and your faithfulness by night, with a ten-string lute and with the harp, with resounding music upon the lyre. For you, O Lord, have made me glad by what you have done. I will sing for joy at the works of your hands. 
How great are your works, O Lord. Your thoughts are very, very deep. May the Lord add his blessing to that. In Psalm 92, 1, it says, Gratitude to God is not only honors him, but it is good for us. In the Old Testament, God uses the sacrificial system to teach his people to be grateful. When he established the Hebrew nation, he gave them very specific, detailed instructions concerning his laws and sacrifices so they would know how he wanted them to live. Through these ordinances, he taught them three important truths. Number one, God is holy, man is sinful, and obedience is essential. God is holy, man is sinful, and obedience is necessary, is essential. Because Jesus was the final sacrifice, we are no longer required to offer animal sacrifices. I say amen to that. And I think you do too. However, the principles the Lord taught through the sacrificial system are still true and applicable for us today. One of the offerings he prescribed was called a sacrifice of thanksgiving. And it was performed every morning and evening, evening as referenced in what Eleanor read today from Leviticus 22, 29 to 23. The twice daily offer reminded the Hebrews that the Lord was the one who brought them out of Egypt and gave birth to them as a nation. He alone saved, kept, and provided for them just as he does for us this very, very day. Most of us will be sitting around a table and we'll have so much food we won't be able to consume it. That's why one of the best days about Thanksgiving is the day after Thanksgiving. When we can have those leftovers. I enjoy leftovers. I'm sure you do too. But just think of what he has provided for us. Not just today. Not just Thanksgiving. But, but every day. Should we do less than what the Hebrews did? Give thanks to God every morning and evening. In recognition of him as a source of everything that we have. One of the most precious provision is this the written word of God your Bible which instructs us and reveals everything we need to know and we should follow about the Lord our gratitude for it can be guarded by our attention to what we read and what we meditate on and what we discuss if we are truly thankful for his word we will diligently read it each and every day so how can we sac follow the example taught by the daily sacrifices of thanksgiving? We can begin by taking note of simple blessings that God provides each day. Having the basic necessities such as food and shelter and, and other gifts that God chooses to bestow within our life. These are all reasons to be thankful. Often we take these things for granted, but they are provided for us by a loving Heavenly Father. We live in a free country. Though we are few today, we chose to be at 605 9th Street, just like they choose to be at the Presbyterian Church, or the Methodist Church, or the Nazarene Church, or the Family Church. We have the ability to go and have freedom. Sometimes I think we abuse that freedom. The right to bear arms, I'm not going to get into that. Uh, the freedom of speech, I'm not going to get into that. But we have these freedoms in this country. We just celebrated Veterans Day. We just observed, I don't know, I usually say celebrated, we just observed Veterans Day when men and women fought and gave their lives so that we could be here today in our church of choice or some are home today because they don't go to church. We talked about that in Sunday school today. Why don't people go to church today? That's the $64 million question, not the $64 question. But we live in a free country, and we are blessed so much. It's not perfect. We know it's not perfect. But I guarantee you, it's better than whatever country is in second place. Having a grateful heart keeps our minds focused on the Lord. The daily thanksgiving sacrifice was a continual reminder to the Hebrews that their God provided for all their needs. Likewise, each morning, 
Likewise, each morning is an opportunity to thank the Lord for a good night of sleep. Even if we toss and turn all night, we can still be grateful that He has given us another day. I don't know about you, but when I open those eyes in the morning, I say, Lord, thank you for another day. Thank you for another opportunity. Thank you for another privilege. I thank you that I'm still able to see and breathe and speak and do what you want me to do, Lord. We should thank him every single day when we wake up. Even if we have a situation that we are not looking forward to facing that particular day for whatever reason, we are still thankful because he is with us every step of the way. Gratitude honors God. We read in Psalm 50 verse 23 he who sacrifices thank offerings honor me and he prepares the way so that I may show him the salvation of God before I continue let me define gratitude first of all it's a noun and is the quality of being thankful readiness to show appreciation for and to return kindness when you when we acknowledge the Lord as the source of all our blessings we are exalting Him by declaring our dependence upon Him. Who of us haven't breathed a prayer of thanks after narrowly escaping an automobile accident? I remember coming home when I was in the Navy on a turnpike. We were coming across someplace out in the central part of the state of Pennsylvania and there was a bad wreck and they had all the ambulances and they had these white sheets covering up the bodies everybody slowed down but 10 miles down the road everybody was going 70 miles an hour again just a human characteristic I guess but still we, we thank the Lord when we, when we experience these situations I've thanked the Lord so many times even down in Louisiana when that truck hit us uh, in Baton Rouge nobody was hurt we were able to drive the car to our Navy buddy's house in Louisiana and we were able to drive it home and I just dropped it off last week to be repaired. So there's always something to give thanks for. See, appreciation helps us realize that we cannot make it through life without the help of God. Thankfulness is expressed in a variety of ways. Sometimes we gather in a worship service to fellowship together, sing praises to God, pray. We can also worship the Lord when we are alone by letting everyday activities, no matter how simple they may be, become reasons to thank Him. Even thanking Him for a parking lot down by the hot dog shop when I don't have to back in because there's about five places that I can just pull right in. I say, thank you, Lord. Another way to acknowledge the Lord as our, as our provider and express our gratitude is to give Him the first part of our income. I preached on stewardship a couple weeks ago. We've been doing better. Praise the Lord for that. A spirit of thanksgiving is a result of remembering all God has done for us and all He's going to do for us, both now today and forever. Scripture describes many blessings and privileges that result for our salvation and should invoke gratitude in our hearts. And they include the following, and I provided this as an insert in your bulletin. God chose us before the foundation of the world. We are indwelt and sealed with the Holy Spirit. We are eternally secure. Now, when I walked into Sunday school class, I knew a year ago I put in the bulletin, and anybody have a question, ask me. Nobody's been asking me a question, but today, no, I got a question for you. What's this thing about eternal security? Well, what's this? What's this? Well, let me just read here from John 10, 28 to 29. Well, first of all, 27. My sheep listen to, to, to my voice. I know them and they know follow me. I will give them eternal life and they will never perish. No one can snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and the Father are one. Also Hebrews 13.5 I will never leave nor, I will, or, nor will I forsake you. Can't say it any better than that. You can interpret that number three your own way. Because I know there are churches and there are pastors that are not sure about eternal security but God forgives us it tells us in the Bible he forgives us of our sins past present and future the only thing that we can be held accountable for is if we blaspheme the Holy Spirit and that's in the Bible so just remember that 
Next, we have been given gifts of the Spirit, spiritual gifts. And I've talked about that in previous sermons. Some of you are using your spiritual gifts. You may not be teaching or preaching, but you're using your gift of help, your gift of mercy, your gifts of, of whatever you can, whatever God has, has enabled you to do. You're using them to glorify and to praise Him. And that's what we are supposed to do. And that tells us in the Bible. See, this book is not... It's what it says it is. It's our guide. It's our way of life, our way of salvation. Next, we have an intimate relationship with the Lord. We have the peace of God in our hearts. The Lord loves us unconditionally. I had a girlfriend when I went in the Navy, and I thought she loved me unconditionally, but she didn't. Doris Jean won that, won that one. She lost. She'd been married two, two times. But anyway, that's another story. We are never distant from the presence of God the Lord provides for our needs. And the key word is need. We don't always get what we want, but we get what we need. We have the promise of a bodily resurrection. We have the blessing of God's atonement through Christ and forgiveness of our sins. We have an eternal home in heaven. We have been given the, the word of God, the source of all knowledge and understanding. True, heartfelt, daily thanksgiving has a powerful impact on our lives. It is a result in a changed mindset and a desire to obey the Lord gratitude. It keeps us continually aware that we are walking in God's presence, which contributes to a godly lifestyle. It also motivates us to look for the Lord's purpose in everything in our lives, even if we don't understand what's going on at that time. It continually reminds us that he is our God and motivates us to f tell others. This is not on the wall to decorate the wall. That's our mission statement. To know Jesus and to make him known. And I know some of you have been making Jesus known. And we haven't seen some of the results. But you've planted a seed. That God will cultivate that. And someday that person may wake up some morning and say, You know, I think I'm going to go to church today. And find out about this about this." person called Jesus and that's all we can do sometimes I've talked to many people I can remember when this restaurant down here I went, one Sunday there was a girl sitting on, on, on the curb and I sat down with her and she was having a tough day and I talked to her and I told her about the church of God and I had a little prayer with her I said you're welcome to come well she never came but I may have planted a seed God, God didn't put her on that curb for nobody else but me that day I really truly believe that it helps us to trust the Lord. Trust in the Lord. We tell that about in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. And He will make our path straight. Because He alone knows what is best. Even though we may think we know what is best. He knows what is best. We can thank Him even though we don't understand why something is happening in our lives at this time. Anxiety is removed. Gratitude can drive our worry, keeps our focus on the Lord, and energizes us physically, mentally, emotionally, and most importantly, spiritually. When we say that God is good all the time, all the time God is good, we believe it. And we can be assured that He has our best interest. Thanksgiving is a time when we give thanks for the blessings we have. Knowing that He is with us. That He will never leave us. He will never forsake us. So in conclusion, as you gather with your family on Thursday, share how God has blessed you. Ask them to share their blessings. You might be surprised what some of them might say that you didn't expect. Is there anything that may keep you from thanking God? What can you do to increase your trust in Him? Remember, remember, Listen, when you face a situation, there's always something you can relate to that is better. Remember my opening illustration of the Scottish minister. I am thank God that the weather's not like this every day. There's always something. So in my last illustration, at least I can do is say thanks. A pastor stood at the Vietnam Memorial in Washington, D.C., 
watched the man in tears lay a reef at the base of the memorial. The pastor, also a Vietnam vet, put his hand on the man's shoulder, and the man looked at him and said, 25 years ago, he stepped in the line of fire for me. The least I can do is say thanks. Thanks. Let us pray. Aaron, we thank you, Lord, that we have that privilege. We have that opportunity. And we know that with you all things are possible. And as we leave here today and as we celebrate Thanksgiving, be with us, be with our families. We are so thankful and grateful. Every day, every day is Thanksgiving. I thank you, Lord, for your people here today. I pray for those who are not here today for whatever reason, those traveling, those who may have some issues. We just trust in you, Lord, for the results. Because you are there. Amen.